Hello, guys. We are live today on um, a lovely, I believe it's a Friday night, apparently. I'm here today joined with Alicia MacArthur, who is the Baroness of Beef, all the way from, I'm going to say Sydney, Australia. That's probably not where you're from. But yeah, tell me, tell me about yourself. What, what's going yeah, on? You got what's it going right. on your yeah. That's it. Well, it's been a while since we've spoken, my friend. Um, it is bit. 6 a.m. <laughs> Bright and early. Um, yeah, beautiful. It's going to be another beautiful day. It's stinking hot here. We had a 40-degree day here in Sydney um, the other day. So I feel it a little. Nice. Yeah, it is, it is pissing it down here, which is very annoying. So I just took my dog George out for a short walk, um, ten minute walk in the rain. So I got drenched, and I'm now wearing a a very um, skimpy vest. My nipple showing, of course, standard. Uh, but yeah, what's, um, so I want to ask you as well, what's um, what does it mean to be a perfect carnival? Then, so this is kind of our discussion point today. Um, there's a lot of people in the space that are like, oh, I just eat yeah. beef, I just eat lamb, salt, you know, drink water, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I don't see many people getting absolute results from that um in that it's useful like a tool but i don't see anyone actually doing it i mean i've spoken to mm. 400 plus people now and there's three people i've met and spoken to online that actually follow a strict lion diet and actually sustain it for more than a week for example so i mean what's your what's been your experience in terms of mm. like your your diet at the moment and where, where are you at now what are you eating and stuff like that Yeah, well, I, I would call myself a perfectly imperfect carnivore, if we're going to be brutally honest. Um, you know, I think I think there's a tendency to overthink carnivore, and you know, if you're really rigidly locking yourself into a nutritional box in that regard because you feel like everybody else expects you to do that, I think you're really approaching it from the wrong angle. I've done lion diet and for me personally, I absolutely love it. My body responded really, really well. However, in a long-term basis for me, no, it, it, it's not mm. the protocol that I want to follow. Um, I, my body seems really happy on butter, eggs, beef. I do have salmon, chicken occasionally, pork in a, in a limited capacity. Um so, yeah, I, I think it's very individual. I think that lion diet, you know, following just exclusively red meat and water um, can really work wonders for expediting healing and for people that are suffering with a variety of conditions. I, I, I would say dip your toe into it and see how you feel. I know that you've done it and you didn't have the most wonderful experience with it. Um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to vary from person to person. It really depends on your personal history. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's funny though because the initial first day or two, I felt really good of it because um, I was only eating, you know, beef and lamb for a couple of days. Um, my digestion was so clear; like, I felt mm. like I could just eat all the meat in the freezer and just not be bloated. Um, and it was really pleasant, and my appetite was very well regulated. I didn't seem mm. to overeat. Um, but then again, I could have eaten more and not felt sick for it, so it was pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a good good clear out as well. Um, there's other there's other like tools you have in a toolbox, so like fasting, dry fasting, um, you know, doing different fasts with like I don't know, mm. high fat stuff like that. All, all these things are just using tools. But um, so what are you eating now? Then roughly like in a day? Because I remember last time we spoke, you're eating like twenty pounds of beef a day, ribeye. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think that the last time we spoke, that was more in the beginning of my carnivore journey. And I'm almost, um, you know, I'm approaching this year, it will be two years down the track. Uh, so we've known each other for a little while. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much look my, I just really eat to appetite. I listen to my body. I was pushing the fasting pretty hard for a while, um, purely because that was convenient for me with my lifestyle. But um. Also, I, I felt like I kind of maybe tip, tipped over a little bit too much into that. Uh, so typically my sweet spot is a two mad, but if my body wants a third meal, I'm going to eat it. You know, there's there's no hard and fast rules for me. Um, most of my meals are ground beef, uh, predominantly uh, good good ribeye. I can afford it. Uh, I absolutely love picanha. That that stuff is just magic. That fat to protein ratio. Oh gets me every time. Um, I love eggs, love butter, 
And uh, like I mentioned before, I will have a serving of oily fish a week to get in those omegas. Some prawns if I feel it. And, yeah, then pork and chicken are kind of the last things that I, I, I feel much better, predominantly beef. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm finding that the same for me. Um, in terms of like my meat content, my diet is about 70% beef. Um, at the moment, it is not pleasant because it's very lean beef, so 5% fat. So it does, doesn't quite hit the spot the same, but it seems to be pretty good. Um, but other than that, wow. I'm eating like turkey thigh, chicken breast, chicken thigh. I've not eaten eggs in about two and a half weeks, not eaten cheese in two and a half weeks. Um, just out of curiosity, just to see what it does. And yeah, I mean, I've, I've not noticed any positive yeah. benefit from getting rid of it. But then again, saying that those sort of things can be a bit hyperpalatable, especially like the cheeses. So for me, like in terms of reducing that, almost like food focus mm -hmm. and like constant intention to eat has reduced quite a bit, um, especially when I'm dieting, trying to lose fat, it seems to be really helpful. But yeah, I mean, I, my, my diet when I'm trying to, you know, just walk around is very high protein, very high fat, um, 50 grams of carbs or below, and it seems to work out quite well. Um, now, here's a big question for you. Do you drink coffee? <laughs> oh, no, it's time to revoke my carnivore card. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I, I did quit it a couple of times and I felt really good. Um, yeah, I know. Um, but, um, yeah, it is part of I guess what does um, Kelly Hogan say? Um, it's water that touched a plant. <laughs> that will be my yeah. justification. Um, I have to be Bean careful soup. with the amount of caffeine I have, of course. And one day I would, I would love to 100% drop. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about you? Um, yeah, I've been having a few decaf coffees recently. I have maybe one or two co caffeinated coffees each week. Um, but I just quite like the decaf with a bit of sugar-free sweetener in it. That's apparently going to kill me and make me diabetic, apparently, even though my HbA1c, blood glucose, and every other blood marker is absolutely perfect. Um, but I'm still going to die of sugar-free sweetener. So there we go. I've got about two weeks left to live on sugar-free sweeteners. Yep. Yeah, stand up. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, tell me about your channel then. I know you're, you're sort of in the middle of studying at the moment. You've kind of redirected your your course or institution that you're learning at right now um so what what's coming up in your channel in the future like what is your focus of, of your channel what are you looking yes. at doing so uh, for those that don't know i'm studying to be a nutritionist which is a pretty amazing journey uh as i operate in the carnivore animal-based ketogenic space so that will be my focus when i go on to consult when i'm certified i refuse to offer any kind of services before I'm qualified. It's just that that's that's my moral standpoint. Um, so my focus would definitely to be to gain um, clients through the channel. Uh, for those who have seen my content, I'm very hard on my sleeve. I talk a lot about mental health issues, uh, about my journey uh, to, to the carnivore diet and what led me there. And, um, you know, I, I think I've kind of, found a little bit of a niche uh, and, and something that's a little bit more um, sort of skewed from the norm in, in the carnivore space. And that seems to be working really well for me. So, you know, it's it's all about building a following, building trust, uh, putting out content that people organically really resonate with. Uh, so that's, that's the focus. I'm probably the easiest YouTuber, and <laughs> as you can probably see by my upload rate. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of trying to to manage work study life in general so you know that there will definitely be some more stuff coming we, we all kind of get asked relatively the same kind of questions in line with content creation um and you know the questions like at dumping carnivore adaptation all the what i eat in a day kind of stuff so you know i, I will definitely you know it's, it's about what they want to see yeah, when people say, you know, oh, I'm trying to, you know, reach the algorithm, it really means I'm trying to reach the viewers. Um, and sometimes the viewers don't like what you make, and I've experienced that myself. And you know, I'm sure as you found, sometimes you spend all this time editing this perfect video about, I don't know, cravings or something that seems really relevant to everyone, but you make it 
and no one watches it. You get like a hundred views. You're like, oh wow, that took me like seven hours to make, and no one likes it. Um, yep. So how how would you get around that then, as a <laughs> as a content creator? What do you what do you think of like what keeps you inspired and motivated? What really works for me is if I talk about something that's in the moment relevant to my life. Uh, that's when I find I'm, I'm kind of creating that free-flowing organic content. I think one of the last things I did was the interview with Fiona, which was amazing. The one before that was when I visited the family farm. Um, my, my parents have property and, and they raise animals and um, it, it was beautiful to get away there. And I spent you know, so much time filming content and then you, know, you look at, at the views and you're like, oh, and that's kind of, that's the luck of the draw really at the end of the day and you know that that has stuff to do with the algorithm and whether your thumbnail is catchy and all those types of things and and I just like to share I, and you know I'm like I said I'm very transparent and a lot of my life is really on display particularly when I talk about complex uh, PTSD and trauma um, but it's those kinds of conversations that are elicited in the comments that are really fulfilling to me and creating those connections. You know, the carnivore community is is largely about connection because I think I've said this before, how often do you walk down the street and meet someone that's in the, the same space as you, the carnivore space? It's it's very rare, very rare. So we have to have these connections via YouTube, via socials, um, to be able to share ideas, share our stories and, and connect. Yeah, I think the same. I mean, in my area of the world, I'm in a place called Bournemouth, which is a small, um, well, it's quite, quite a large town, relatively speaking, um, the south of England. And I've not met a single other carnivore around here. I'm saying I've not met a single other ketogenic diet out, dieter out here. So it's very strange. I'm meeting someone literally polar opposite of the world and talking about the mm. carnivore diet and stuff like that. And I've got my friend Jerome, who's actually in the chat right now. Um, he's from Wisconsin in the States. Um, we've also got Tom, who's been the longest term channel member of mine. So I appreciate your membership, Tom. Um, keep up the good work. And we've got Mike as well. Mike's been a, cha a channel member for quite a few months now, probably four or five months, I think. Hi, Tom. Um, yes, so a few other people have joined the chat from your channel as well. So I um, just want to say, guys, if you do have any questions for us, feel free to ask. Um, health, nutrition, exercise, carnival, you know, just life stuff in general. If you have any questions, guys, just leave a cue before the question. We'll be happy to answer them. But, um, yeah, we're just going to carry on our discussion now anyway. So um, I wanted to ask about exercise as well. So what are you doing right now for exercise? And I appreciate you've you limited on time in terms of like work and studying and that sort of thing. Like, what have you found works for you right now? Uh, yeah, so basically I don't do any concerted cardio at all apart from some gentle walking uh, and that's been pretty much going since I went carnivore I used to be extremely obsessed with cardio you know I thought that that was the answer to to all my fat loss problems um, and it, it surely wasn't I think I think it's a great tool uh, but yeah it, it just wasn't doing me any favors so I, I pretty much now lift I'm trying to lift around three to four times a week uh, that seems to to be manageable for me. I used to lift six days a week, um, and I yeah, I just I don't have the time <laughs> and partially the energy to be able to do that. And I think you know y your workouts don't have to be sustained, and you know days upon days upon days. You know if you're utilizing the time and, and getting the most out of your movements during your sessions, you know that's that's bigger bang for your buck. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, what do your workouts look like now? So you're doing three or four sessions per week. You're doing full body, upper, lower. Is it instinctive? Like, what do, what's a session look like, say, on a Monday, for example? Um, so my training typically starts on my first day off, which is usually Friday. Um, that's when I feel like I've actually had some decent sleep uh, and I've got good energy and I'm ready to go so generally my sessions are kind of split up like my splits are legs glutes uh, shoulders chest biceps triceps um, back and abs 
So that's that's kind of the split that I've been doing for years and years and years that seems to work well for me. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, my, my split right now is I tried upper, upper body, lower body last week, and I got fresh from it. I trained too hard over those sessions, so I couldn't maintain it. Um, I'm kind of at the point now where I'm just going to maintain probably a push-pull leg sort of split. So chest, shoulders, triceps, day one. Day two will be back and biceps, mm. um, then legs on the third day. But, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with injuries and things, so I'm just doing it slightly instinctively. So I'm, I've got a rough guard in my head of what I'm going to do in each session, what I want to achieve. I track everything. But sometimes it just doesn't play out that way. So maybe I'll write something else down and say, oh, asterisk, um, leg press instead of hack squat, something like that. So I play it by ear based mm. on how my body feels. But um, it seems to be the best way to go about it for me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting stuff. So we've got our first yeah. question. You'll be able to help answer as well, Alicia. Um, and this one is from Tom. Um, so the question is, yeah. Jonathan, how many people yeah. are you aware yeah. of that are on an all meat diet? It's so not just beef, but pork, chicken, etc. After cutting out dairy and eggs, I find eating only meat perfectly manageable. Um, I answered this question minutes ago, but what do you think, Alicia? Um, how many? Oh, look, you know, I, I, I have been through the eating, as we were talking about, eating only meat and and drinking only water and and the only thing that 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 reverted me back to adding in eggs and i forgot to mention i do i do eat some dairy in the way of cheese um is that i just i wanted a little bit more variety um and you know if, if my body is asking me for certain things i'll definitely listen to that um i think there's something to be said for you know really paring it down to foods that are the least inflammatory that red meat that water um and the benefits that 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 has um and yeah it, it's 100 percent about listening to your body and and giving it what it's asking for and that that's always worked well for me i don't i don't rigidly just say this is the way i'm going to eat and that's it you know i have to have a why and it has to make sense instinctively to me yeah absolutely that that makes perfectly perfect sense i mean we can't outsmart our own body um a lot of people i see online these people that i consult with they, they'll try a lion diet mm. and they just don't sustain it um they do it for a week and it's great i mean you did something for a week you worked out okay i feel all right on this but i still like eggs i still like cheese fair enough and that's gonna give you a better quality of life if you listen to your body's instincts providing it's the right food um now as for people that i've met on an all meat diet so whether that be chicken pork beef lamb I'd say Jordan Peter. Well, I've not not so just people overall. So I'll say everyone I can think of, whether I've met them or not. Um, Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson, mm. Tom, Tom now. Tom, just who's track now. Um, Mike's been doing so. Pr Primal Mike, he's been on our channel mm. right now. He's been doing that for a few months, I think. Um, and about three of people yeah. that I've met in consultations. So we're talking about about a five out of hundreds of people if not up to maybe even a thousand people i've met online or spoken to or seen anecdotes of online that follow a, a strict meat only diet so it tells me it's not an absolute requirement to eat that sort of diet now it's, it's probably helpful yeah like you're gonna refine things back it's a useful elimination diet whether it's chicken thighs and beef or just beef it's probably you know pretty much the same sort of thing just i'll probably stick mostly to beef just because there's a slightly cleaner food source but yeah it's a good question um and just for me, my my yeah. genetics, I seem to require a bit more dairy. So although I'm not eating cheese now or eggs, I'm having about half a litre of raw milk every single day. Yeah. Um, my heart starts to pound if I don't have it. Uh, and I've tried tried it a couple of times since I've first tried this about a year and a bit ago, maybe yeah. 14, 15 months ago. And I just can't manage it for more than about two days. Um, so for me, it just tells me I've tried it over and over again. It's just not. It's not working. I don't like the way I feel on it. And as someone that's suffered with anxiety in the past, I'm sure you as well, Alicia, like depression, mental health. Um, anytime your heart's pounding, you feel like stressed out. It's not a pleasant response. And you don't want to go back and yeah. spiral backwards into bad eating habits. So I'd rather see someone be 100% adherent to a 95% diet in terms of strictness than 
strict for a week than eating Cheerios for a week, you know? Um, that's, that's what I think anyway. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And, uh, you know, it, it's about progress, not perfection. You know, I've said it before in, in many different interviews and on my channel, you know, there's no there's no awards for, for carnivore perfection. <laughs> you know, if someone doesn't come up to you and, and hand you a certificate and shake your hand, you know, you manage your life, your lifestyle, whilst taking care of your health in the most optimal way. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all a, you know, it's a continuum. The carnival diet is effectively a continuum, whether you be hyper carnivore, something you're eating, 70% of all your nutritional intake from animal foods. It's it's all kind of under the same umbrella, same bracket, really. Um, just some people tolerate these things better. So at the moment, I, I confess, um, every week for the past, let's say, month, I've been having a meal out of family. And I know my channel members already know this. Um, and that will be a, a roast dinner out on a Sunday, which for anyone doesn't know, my roast dinner is gravy, maybe a couple of carrots, maybe a bit of red cabbage, maybe some cauliflower cheese, beef, lamb, or turkey. And that's about it. So I'm still effectively ketogenic. Um, but over the span of, say, a period of time, I'm about 99% carnivore anyway, in terms of like the minute macronutrient intake. So, you know, I find that works quite well for me. And it doesn't seem to destroy me. But it's when I have back to back meals that aren't quite, you know, strict, that's when I tend to start to really suffer. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually now on less medication than I was on the last time we spoke, Alicia. Um, so I'm only using um, half of a antiviral tablet now, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing doing quite well in that regard. So my, my gut's yes. more healed up so I can tolerate these things a bit better. So, you know, you, if, you, if your body feels yeah. better, you can deal with it. So, yeah, my, my goal is to get off yeah. all these medications because I hate taking them, you know. Um, what's, your, what's your experience been with in terms of, like, supplements and medication alicia have you noticed you've taken things out added things in like what's your journey been over the last year yeah so uh as i've discussed with you on on your channel you know one of the the main reasons i came to carnivore was to get off large amounts of opioids that i've been on for years and years for adenomyosis um which is ugly sister of endometriosis basically there is no um apart from a total hysterectomy. And I just wasn't prepared to go through with that. I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel ready. And I just, I knew that there was, there was something that I could try that was skewed from the norm. Um, so yeah, I've, since I went carnivore, I've been completely off opioids, which is incredible. Um, I was on a large amount of CBD oil uh, which in my country is very expensive and tricky to get, um, and it, it, that wasn't sustainable. Um, when I originally went carnivore, um, I had huge electrolyte problems, and on and on for about six months, I just could not find my sweet spot there. It didn't matter kind of what I was doing. Um, I was chlorine uh, in the beginning as well, um, which I, I haven't taken not because i don't want to or i don't feel like i need it i just forget that i have it i think taurine is extremely beneficial uh, and particularly when you are lifting hard and heavy um very supportive for the body uh the things that i now use are more kind of sleep therapeutics it's, it's not so much filling any gaps or i need to to have any of those interventions um so now it's more things like melatonin for sleep, 5-HTP, you know, keep the anxiety and the stress low. And I do use apigenin as well combined in my sleep stack. So that's that's more for the, uh, the nervous system support more than anything rather than, than anything to do with my nutritional protocol. Um, I have um, any more that will be only if I feel like I, I really, really need them. So occasionally I'll have an mm. element. Um, but no, I used to be like downing the magnesium tablets, having element every day, still waking up with these incredible leg cramps and, you know, have, having stuff from that. But um, your, your body naturally finds its way there. And um, 
I think everyone kind of gets to a point to guide you to where you need to be and it, it will it will sort itself out. Adaptation can take a long time. People think it's two weeks, everything should be fine now. And it's just like there are some people a year down the track that are struggling and having kickback and, you know, trying to finesse things. So, you know, you, you've got to be patient. For those of us that, that came from a standard whatever diet, there's a lot of damage, a lot of inflammation, you know, that's years and years and years of things that you have to counteract. And, you know, sometimes that process is going to take time. So being patient is really key. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does take time. I think people want to rush things and get it sorted now. Um, I mean, these supplements are useful transitionally, yeah. I mean, I can get behind some of those sleep supplements you recommended. Um, I recommend some of them very occasionally. Melatonin seems to be more common um, people that do any kind of shift work and things like that. But, um, yeah, we've actually got some questions from people, so I'm going to just quickly scroll through the chat. And um, I just wanted to mention this one up from Caitlin, which is very kind of her to actually say, but she said, Hi from New Zealand. Love your message, Alicia. You gave me courage to dive into a few weeks priming which is absolutely transformational in getting me through my first binge-free month in over a year. That's pretty cool. And we've got another question from, from this same person, it's Caitlin's again. The question is, my question is, do you have any tips for balancing electrolytes? I shed electrolytes are mad on keto, kind of a way of eating, and super struggle to find the right balance sorted. Um, what has your, your experience been, Alicia, with that sort of thing? What have you heard people tend to do? Um, yes, so I, I guess that it kind of harkens back to what we were just talking about, um, you know, you were due to not having the carbs coming in. Um, so, yeah, it's, look, it's, it's really about finding a sweet spot. Don't be afraid of salt. Don't be afraid to supplement where you need to. I would suggest that you look at the supplements that you're using, though, checking the ingredients fastidiously like you would do with a food label. I think everybody forgets about that piece of the puzzle. Um, if you need uh, electrolyte support 100%, take something like Element or or any kind of clean electrolyte you like. Magnesium is an amazing support. For, um, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's literally just finessing and, and kind of finding your feet there. That Yeah, I, I wish I had a... Yeah, there's a, it doesn't seem to be an absolute firm, concrete answer of what to do on this. Um, it could be a number of different things. I mean, my initial thought is increase your yeah. salt intake, drink more water. Um, if you're drinking loads of water and you're getting electrolyte issues, it's mm -hmm. because you're diluting your system and you're flushing out the salts and electrolytes that you are taking in. Correct. So if you're going to have you know liters and liters of water, put a bit of salt in it, and that will help top you up. Yes. Yeah. So it doesn't act as much of a diuretic. Now you need um, water in the absence of sodium and other electrolytes will dehydrate you. Um, you'll end up less hydrated by having loads more water than what your body needs, especially if you're going from you know a mixed mixed diet with processed foods, loads of salt in it, to lower salt, just salt your food a little bit. You know your body's gonna chuck out loads of excess information, ex excess water, mm. things like that. Um, if you're using this some kind of fat loss protocol or you're doing it to lose fat as part of your, your way of life, your way of eating sort of thing. Um, it could be that you're excreting or producing a lot of oxidative stress. When your body does that, you end up having to increase your the volume mm. or you know the amount of water that you take in to act as a buffer for the oxidation that's happening in your blood. So your body's mm. trying to find a way to in increase the pool, the reservoir, wet reservoir, um, so that wherefore any oxidation does hap happen isn't going to absolutely destroy you because you're dehydrated all the time. So that's why someone might be more thirsty if they're losing fat. Other reasons include you're cooking your yeah. food to death. You now, when you cook your food too much, <laughs> um, you could be losing some electrolytes from that, perhaps, and maybe there's some titration that can happen. Um, you will lose an amount of taurine that is accompanied in the meat if you overcook your food as well. Um, some people tend to do yeah. better with slightly more rare food than not. You know, try it yourself. Um, cook your meat a little bit less. Try that out. Um, 
other things might include you're still taking vitamin C and multivitamin tablets and things. Um, if there's too much of something and it's throwing up your body off balance, that can make you, you know, urinate more, which means you're going to probably you lose more electrolytes. Um, then, of course, you've got the supplemental side, so adding in potassium citrate, perhaps um, magnesium, something like that. Um, it doesn't take a lot. You don't need 10 sachets of LMNT or whatever it is that people sell nowadays. It might just mean you have to have one sachet split throughout the day or just in a cup of water. Um, but yeah, they're the things that I'd look at. So the quantity of water that you're having, your current stage mm. of where you're at in terms of like your your fat loss, if that's something you're doing, um, your oxidative stress, how much you're sleeping at night, that can affect your um, thirst and hunger signals. Um, yes. If you're not very insulin sensitive, if your body's in a state where your blood glucose is running high, you're probably going to you know take in more water, which is flushing electrolytes out. Because again, you're trying to buffer or create a reservoir of water for your body to um, get rid of any extra stress or any extra sugar that you might be um, losing downstream through the the breakdown of you know fatty acids or muscle glycogen or just just being in, a, in an odd state um, metabolically. So they're the things that I'd look at. So without a consultation, I won't be able to pinpoint which one it was. But try each one of those things out one by one. See what helps you. See what doesn't help you um give it a good amount of time as well don't give it a day then say it's not worked give it a good week or two then move into the next thing add in the next thing then add in the next mm. thing and see what yeah see what the benefits are that's my that's my my kind of sense anyway yeah i'm having water out of a champagne glass everyone it's water not champagne yeah that's right yeah i'm not drinking for a little bit i'm going to bed after this i'll probably um try not to drink too much um, just on that point, quickly, Mike made a good point. So potassium, magnesium, we're in a good balance in red meat. All we need is correct sodium ratio to potassium, which is what we get from our salt. All then drink only to first to avoid dilution and balance. Exactly that. Um, so Mike's been listening very intently to me and Richard Smith online. Um, it talks a lot of sense. Yeah, it's, we don't need to perfect the ratio. We just need to be eating our food, and our appetite will tell us what we need to do and how much we need to drink. So don't try and force these things. Don't add in a tablespoon of salt to you next time you drink water. I just add in a bit and see how it works for you. Um, that's, that's kind of my, my thought process anyway. Um, yeah, then yeah, you're drinking too much water. So I'd, I'd have to ask how much you were drinking, Caitlin. Um, a point of reference, I'm four years into carnivore. Mm. I drink about two to two and a half liters per day. If I eat um too much protein relative to fat so my fat is very low but protein is quite high that will have a diuretic effect and you won't produce as much metabolic water which means your first will then eventually go up so if you're depleting a lot and you're trying to lose fat again that explains why you'd actually be drinking more water than what you need um but the intention is to not drink more water than what your body needs people habitually sit there with a cup of water and they'll drink it and drink it and drink it um yeah but i i don't drink a lot because i don't need to because i'm adapted over time but the goal isn't to drink six liters of water a day. Mm. The goal is to just drink enough water for what you intend to do in your purpose. Um, so one experiment you can do is if you you're ex, you exercise, you're active, weigh yourself before and after when you're in the gym. Um, don't drink anything during that session. If you do a gym session or a walk or a hike and see how much actually weight you lose. And that's probably how much actually water you should actually drink in your session. So for me, I've tested before. I tend to lose about three to 400 grams when I train. So when I train, I drink for three to 400 grams. So I get myself back up to baseline. That's one little um, experiment you can use, I think. Um, but yeah, yeah, just, just be patient, basically. But um, we've got another question, Alicia, and that is from Carnival Keith. And it is, question, question, question. Any advice for talking to our family and friends when they're worried about okay. your health being carnival? I'm 11 months carnival now and living my best life. I've got a few thoughts on this, but what's your initial thoughts, Alicia? <laughs> well, look, I'm I'm sure we all had family members and friends be like, really? That's that's what you're gonna do? What about cholesterol? Aren't you gonna have a heart attack? Aren't you gonna get diabetes? What about scurvy? And I think we feel a tendency as carnivores to over explain and justify ourselves. Whereas, you know, someone that is gluten sensitive or someone that that prefers to, to eat a vegetarian diet or vegan diet for whatever whatever 
protocol you're on, they don't they don't feel the urge for that because the way that we eat and live our lives is seen as controversial <laughs> due to, you know, the, the years and years and years of indoctrination and, and false inf- information about health and, and how to manage our health that's out there. So I think, you know, some things that work for me is, is just going, I'm on an, an elimination diet um, and just leaving it at that. I think saying to people, look, if you are really interested in my way of eating, I can send you some information, not feeling like you have to get up on a pulpit and like spruik and go into bat for yourself, Um, kind of put the onus back on them, you know, hey, if this is something you're truly curious about, let me point you to some some great credible sources uh, and and why it's it's led me to that. So yeah, that that would probably be my advice there. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think the only limitation we have with a lot of this sort of thing is people they they don't want to do it themselves. They think you can't do it because they're addicted to carbs or sugar still. And that's completely fine. People could do what they want. You know, I don't tell people what to do. But if someone comes to me and they say, I've got a problem, and they're asking me, well, yeah, this is how you fix it. You know, carnivore diet, you know, getting the right light exposure, yeah. drink to first, that sort of thing, all very basic things. Um, now, what I'd probably say is to look up videos by Professor Bart Kay. He's, in my opinion, the only person in this space who very clearly explains the studies in regards to cholesterol, if that was something you're concerned about or they were concerned about. Um, he's got a massive, massive, a massive playlist on it. Type in Professor Bart K cholesterol. Um, he can talk for hours about it and how a lot of that stuff doesn't make any sense. Um, outside of that, I mean, Dr. Chafee's been putting out some good content recently, especially about, you know, fiber intake, maybe vitamin C, things like that. But the funny thing is, everyone will look at you and, for example, mm. Alicia or myself, and we'll present as the healthiest people we've ever been in our adult life, perhaps. And they'll say, no, nah, you're going to die of a heart attack in a year. But all my blood, blood markers are perfect. Even the ones I don't care about are perfect. My lipid panel is perfect. Um, it's largely genetic. My dad, my brother, and I all have the same lipid panel profile. Exactly the same, give or take point two. Or something, something daft. Um, so that kind of tells me it is largely genetic. Now, there are blood tests that are more useful to look at, in which case I'd recommend a video which I made with Professor Bart K, which is something like Carnivore Diet Blood Testing 101. Um, it's a short 10, 15 minute video. I highly recommend watching that. And it's on my health playlist on my YouTube channel. So send that one to people and it gives you a better idea of what's going on, explains it very clearly, succinctly in a short video. But yeah, I mean, it depends what these people are concerned about, but I don't have concern. Um, I perform very well in terms of what I do. I'm autistic. I am very good at what I do now. Um, all things considered, considering my mental health, physical health circumstances, I I seem to appear, in my opinion and the opinion of virtually everyone I know, uh, much better than I did before. So if I can do it, it tells me you can do it. And you might actually get a bit great experience than me if you're a bit older than me. So I'm 28 years old. Maybe you're a bit older, maybe Keith, uh, in which case you can say, well, this young guy had horrendous health. Now look at him. Look at we, look what he is able to do. I'm not saying it to sort of, you know, whistle up myself, but, you know, I don't see any other autistic people out there doing what I do with the severity of symptoms that I experience. Um, so that tells me, yes, the carnivore diet does work. And that's mm. just the mental health side of it. The physical health, you know, that we can, we can look at hours and hours and hours, probably thousands of hours of anecdotes online interviews with different carnivore doctors, nutritionists, and stuff like that, and you'll see, well, this person had this problem, they start this diet, now they don't. So it's pretty cause and effect to me. There's not, they've not um, had a magic, magic pill or magic bullet. So, yeah, that's kind of my, my take on it. Um. Yeah, Caitlin's having four to five liters a day, which unless you're like seven foot tall and I don't know, train a lot and live in a desert is probably absurdly high. Um, and Alicia has one and a half liters. Yeah, that makes sense. Alicia's more physically active than I am. She has a physically active job, um, you know, running around doing things. I'm very sedentary because I have to be. I train four times a week, but that's about it. That's my activity other than walking the dog sometimes. So yeah, one and a half liter sounds about right. I have two to two and a half liters. So makes good sense. 
Um, thank you for the advice. Much appreciated. Check this video. Yeah, for sure. It'll, it'll save you a lot of grief and time. But remember, Keith, at the end of the day, it's, it's your health. You know, you're responsible for your health outcomes. When, whatever interventions you do is your own choice and people can't force you to do anything. Um, it's not, I'm, I assume you're not in a third world country where you're being dictated to. Um, so yeah, just, just look out for yourself for your own sake, you know, for your own um, humanity, you know. Yeah, Carson's having one to one half liters. Exactly, you know, over a period of time, your thirst goes down because you begin to make metabolic water and your body just sorts itself out, I find. Yeah, did you have any other sort of takes on that, Alicia, at all? Sorry, Jonathan, I've just. Yeah, the, um, yeah, apologies for anyone listening. What basically when I'm speaking, um, Alicia's at least 10 to 15 seconds behind me because we're opposite ends of the globe. So if it looks a bit awkward on the live stream, that's why. Um, it's just, it seems to be like a Wi Fi problem. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering what Alicia, your take that's was right. on, um, that sort of thing. Um, look, for me, I think, again, it just comes down to that kind of intuitive listening to your body, just kind of like manage my fluid intake, uh, sipping as I need to and... I, I often find by the afternoon and into the the early evening, my body actually doesn't want any more. Finding my way through electrolyte disturbance and and finding my sweet spot with just how much food I needed to eat. Um, so that that's definitely changed now. But yeah, it's a liter to liter and a half for me, and that that seems to be more than adequate. Yes, yeah, fair enough. Um, one thing I might suggest to Caitlin is to try out taurine. Um, so it's a simple amino acid your body does get from meat. Um, it is essential. Without it, you'll die, and pretty much every carnivorous animal in the in the world world would die from without it. Um, it seems to be uh, about half people I meet seem to find some benefit from it, whether it be sleep improvement, better digestive health, mm. better mental health, um, better appetite regulation and thirst regulation so it's um, what we call an os osmolite so it helps regulate the pota sodium potassium pump in your body which people find very useful so that's something to look at as well um if the other things don't work but the goal isn't to add in loads of supplements for me and anyone i work with really it's just to add in things to see if it helps might be down the line that sort of gets your first down a little bit then you can go from there and be drinking about more sensible amount maybe that's my, my that's my thought process anyway yeah we've run out of questions alicia so do you want to talk about anything else Hey there, Jonathan. Oh, there we go. Good day. Yeah, you're about 30 seconds behind, I think. <laughs> I don't very much off into space, no. <laughs> That's right. You can watch the replay later, Alicia. You, you'll um, have a bit of a laugh. <laughs> 
some bizarre connection problems. Oh, there we go. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, Alicia, I'd probably use your, your phone if you have it um, to hand. Yeah. Yeah, Caitlin, give it a try. You might find it useful. Um, you Let might not. Worst case scenario, it's I'm very cheap. So in and see if this works better. It's worth guys. giving a little go. There we go. There we go. I can see you. Yay! There we go. All right. All right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's le less echoey now. Um, I find every time I talk to someone, they're actually better off using their phone for video and audio than they are for a des designated laptop with a webcam on it. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, every time I do one of these, people are like, no, laptop, and then I do it, and it completely works against me. So, yeah. Thanks for hanging yeah, the, in there, guys. Yeah, the, the Wi-Fi connectivity of uh, mobile phones is far superior. Um, there's less yeah. processing issues with, like, the audio, so the sounds more more um, more present, if that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, what else do you want to talk about today, Alicia, because we've got a bit of time? Um, yeah, so I would really love to hear a bit more about your your contest prep. I was really curious to hear about the the cuts of meat that you were eating in, in the, the sense that you were titrating the fat down. How is that making you feel? Honestly, um, I'm waking up at four in the morning starving hungry as if I haven't eaten in weeks. Um, yeah. so point of reference, I started at, I think I said this already, but 300 protein, 50 fat carbs and about 300 fat. Um, I get all of my, my carbs from dairy sources. So lots of raw milk. Um, I like it. It's great. It doesn't make me fat apparently. Um, but yeah, basically my, my carbs are still around about 40, 50 grams a day on average. But what I've done is I've pretty much half my fat intake and I've just steadily lost fat since doing that. Um, and it's funny though because i'm looking at my weight and measurements some weeks i'm getting like a big drop um but not much change in terms of like the body fat amount so like the you know the calipers like you basically usually to mm. pinch your body fat and measure whatever and i use about nine different points for body and it works out my bo estimated body fat percentage um but yeah some weeks i don't lose any any fat or weight what sorry weight on the scale but i'm using those things i'm like oh, i've lost two two millimeters on my thighs or you know something like that so it's very yeah. interesting to see how the weight fluctuates and the body shifts. Um, but the great thing about the carnival diet is my weight's very stable day to day. So I wake up mm. and it's, if I, if I get a drop, it'll be like a few days go by, then it's a 0.3 or 0.4 kilo drop, then nothing for like a week, something like that. But pre previously on a carb centric diet, I'd find that my carbs were high. And if I drank a bit too much or salt my food a bit too much one day, then my weight would swing up like two kilos. So it's so hard to track. And um, yeah. I find that's one of the hidden benefits of the carnival diet because you're less inflamed. There's less things yeah. to go wrong. When you're getting rid of a whole macronutrient for the most part, you just don't get that extra inflammation. So that's been really useful. Um, in terms of the cuts of meat, it's just choosing leaner meats. So um, I am eating some chicken breast sometimes. I tend to have that in my middle two meals per day. So I have four meals throughout the day. First meal is usually my smallest. Second's a bit larger. Third's quite small. And fourth's before bed is my biggest because I, I tried to aim for that to keep me satiated overnight so I'm not starving hungry at four or morning, but it doesn't work because the net mass balance of my body is that I'm losing fat at a very rapid rate, so I'm going to be hungry, so I expect that. Um, but I'm doing lots of biohacks alongside that, so blue blocking glasses at night. I've got blue blocking screens, bread light lamp therapy here, which I'll quickly turn on if I can. Um, so I go oh, red light that. Put on the red yes, light. Right cool. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very effective, honestly. But um, I'm more concerned now about just biohacking my sleep. So a lot of what, what I do is like aimed around sleep. So, for example, we have studies out there right now, which are quite old studies, believe it or not. But they sort of said you're better off basically sleeping an extra hour at night than you are waking up mm -hmm. an hour early and doing an hour on a treadmill, for example. Um, so you're actually better off just resting more. 
uh, especially when yeah. you're using fat, uh, fat when you're using um, your dietary intake as the, the fat loss lever. So you don't want to stress your body out. So I've noticed I'm very sensitive to issues when I start losing sleep. So my sleep is sacred. Um, you might have heard that before. So for me, it's about nailing my recovery because I can train as hard as I want. I can diet as hard as I want. I could eat nothing for weeks and end if I knew it would win me a competition. But then I'm not going to be able to sustain that if I don't recover from my workouts and that sort of thing. So I'm big yeah. on sleep and recovery. But that's that's kind of what my stuff is in a nutshell. Did you have any other questions about that at all? Um, it, you know, we, we spoke about this yesterday. It's, it's interesting between you and I, you know, you, you're you a fastidious tracker and, you know, rightly so when you're coming into contest prep and I completely don't track anything at all. Um, what do you see as the pros and cons of tracking versus not tracking? What would you say to a client, I guess, if they, they were coming to you and, and they knew nothing about macros, anything? That's a good question. Yeah. So, I'd love to be able to say to people, look, um, go on a cardboard diet, eat meat and fat to satiety, salt to taste, drink water to first. Majority of people mess that up. Not not on purpose, just accidentally. They don't eat the rendered fat that comes out of the pan. They're eating too lean. The cuts are too lean. Um, they're chugging down water. You know, this is experience in this chat. You know, a lady was drinking five liters a day, which is quite a lot, uh, unless she's obviously a big and active. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, it's hard to get right. So, I will caveat what I'm saying with everyone that comes to me specifically in regards to body composition has a problem with what they're doing. So they come to right. me because something is wrong. So I have to get them to track something. So I know what variable to tweak to get them the result. Um, but if yeah. someone is happy, happy going along as, as you are, Alicia, then yeah, you don't need to track anything. If your weight stay, we feel good. You sleep well at night. Your digestion's good. Your energy is good. You can train hard all that sort of thing. Then there's mm. no necessity to track but there is more necessity when you try to get to the outer limits in terms of your body composition. So that means either getting very muscular or very, very lean. Because if you can track something, you can measure something. If you can measure something, you can manage something. And therefore, yeah. you know what is and is not working. Um, so for me, that's kind of the pros. The obvious cons to me are that's a pain in the backside if you're not used to it. Um, but I'd say for everyone, just try to do it for a week, regardless of where you're at, just so you know roughly where, what you're eating. Um, it might actually mean that you can refine things down the line. So if you know you're eating this much protein, this much fat, roughly on average, give or take maybe 10, 15 grams, then you can know, okay, my, my goal now is to lose a bit of fat or gain a bit of weight. Okay, increase something or decrease something. So it's, it's yeah. quite simple. Um, it's not really a, a hard to find way to do it. But what I would look at is a video. It's on my channel. It's on a playlist called... I want to say nutrition tracking or lose fat, something like that. The video is called nutrition tracking on carnival, something like that. Um, it's quite, quite a popular video for my channel, but I recommend looking at that. It tells you exactly how to do it using a free app, free software online. Um, we can get it obviously on your phone and that will teach you how to do it, how to add stuff, remove stuff, how to set your guidelines, what I'd recommend to people starting out. Um, that's pretty much how I'd do it. And it seems to be effective in most cases. Um, I'll say broadly speaking that men tend to overeat protein and undereat fat, and they also expect to receive results immediately. Um, so the amount of people that I come across all the time, which is several times a week, is someone says, I can't train in a gym that hard because I'm low on energy. It turns out they're eating next to no fat at all. Um, so they might be eating 100 grams of fat and 250 grams of protein, so they're eating too lean. Um, and they actually have to deliberately be eating that lean in order to get that kind of ratio to, of protein to fat. So they don't actually realize they're doing it. Then I write down on my phone, I, I ask them in a consultation what they're eating. They're just eating too lean every single time. Um, or they're doing too much activity. Um, the amount of people I come across that are trying to do 20 hours of workouts a week is absurd. Um, there's mm. no need to do more than three or four sessions per week, and that's at the most for anyone. Um, keep it under an hour if you can there seems to be a cortisol spike after that hour and obviously you know excessive chronically elevated cortisol is not going to be helpful you're not going to live longer for it you just need to do the right amount to get that adaptive response or it be muscle gain fat loss uh you know something to just, just to enjoy beyond that point you know people might say oh i i feel great after doing a two-hour workout in the gym yes because you've stressed the shit out of your body for two hours and now you've stopped doing that. So you're going to get a massive dopamine hit because yeah. your body's raw and telling you, thank you for stopping that. 
I'm no longer suffering for what you're trying to put on me. Now I'm going to have to yeah. spend all this time recovering and overeating to compensate for the massive torment and toll you put on my body. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's kind of my take on exercise, nutrition tracking. Um, it is very helpful. And I'd say if everyone can do it, I'd, I'd try it for at least a week just to see where you're at. You can always look at it again in the future if you wanted to refine things. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I think, you know, tracking, there's so much useful data in there, um, particularly in the context of, you know, when you're trying to get to the root cause and, and, and kind of investigate and see what's happening for that person. Um, and I think for me on the, the opposite end of the spectrum, because I spent so long tracking, um, you know, with bodybuilding and, and, and different things like that, I, I became almost way too hyper-focused on the numbers for me. And, you know, I, I think so many women in the carnivore space went through that stage of, I must eat 80% fat, 20% protein. Like it has to be that. And you, you know what happens every couple of months, something else happens. Someone's tried something, everyone jumps on board and, and that's fine. Um, but for me, it became quite distracting. Um, and, you know, having my Fitbit going off, telling me how many steps I had to get in and, and all those types of things. There was just so much white noise that I couldn't actually focus on just enjoying the process. So for me, cutting all that stuff worked. Occasionally, you know, I might jump on just to plug in some numbers and that's purely just for my, my own knowledge, but I don't feel like I'm locked into that and I'm beholden to those numbers. I already have all the data I need about my health. But yeah, I definitely, you know, when it comes in, in a consultation, um, having those numbers is, is really key. Yeah, I, I do notice that people don't get it right um, in that, I'm, the thing is, I, I, it's always the same problems over and over and over again. And I've been doing this now for about 18 months online specifically. And I remember having so many conversations with Professor Bart K offline where we're talking about not um, like personal information about clients, but just what we've generally found. And I'm finding mm -hmm. ex the exact same thing as him over and over again. It's people try to overcomplicate things. Um, mm -hmm. They look at these small little pebbles. These small little pebbles are trying to pick up every pebble. But they're missing these big rocks. You know, are you eating enough meat? Yes or no? Um, well, I'm eating about one to two pounds a day. Was it one or is it two? That's a, a two-fold increase if you're eating two pounds versus one. How yep. much food do you eat? And ne nearly every consultation I have, people cannot tell me how much food they're eating. Even approximate, even ounces, grams. They'll just say, oh, uh -huh. one or two packs. I'm like, well, how much is that, you know? Um, and that's where people get problems. They they overestimate or underestimate how much food they're eating. We've seen yeah. in different studies where they've observed people and people tend to under-report their food intake by about 40%, something like that. And um, they overestimate their activity level. So that's yeah. why I tell yeah. people to track because you can't <laughs> trust your judgment. You know? Yeah. 100%. Different for me because I've been doing it for so long. I, I know exactly what I'm doing. I've been doing this for bodybuilding for about 15 years or so and i've been tracking for 10 of those years um yeah now i do it as an experiment it doesn't stress me out i give myself a guideline so mm. i can tell you what my macros are right now over a given week because i've tracked my food but i give myself yeah. a bracket each day so i'm better on some days eating 320 grams or 330 grams of protein but the next day maybe i eat a bit less but i give myself a, a guideline because say i don't hit that the protein threshold that amount i need to recover for example my appetite tells me to eat more protein. I'm pushing myself backwards. So my, my recovery is going backwards because of that. I'm digging myself a bigger hole than what I need to. So in that instance, yeah, I absolutely have to track things. And at the same time, you have to give yourself a bit of a bit of leeway as well. Um, so you know, it's not about being perfect, which is the point of this this conversation. It's not about being perfect in terms of getting everything right. It's about yeah. optimizing the way your body feels and finding your your results, finding some guidelines, some bracket. Or you perform your best but yeah it seems to work pretty well um yeah i always think of pirates of the caribbean that captain barbosa says it's more like guidelines not actual rules so yeah <laughs> mm, that's the way yeah, i like them uh, they're making a new one apparently at some point soon ah uh, yes we've got a question from carnival keith um I'll answer this one question, question quickly. So roughly a month ago, I did release this video. Um, it is very, very, very effective and good. Um, it's what I think is, broadly speaking, the best workout for the average person. And that gives you the best blend between frequency, intensity, specificity, 
time in the gym. Um, and the other video I made is something like ultimate home bodyweight workout. So if you've got no equipment, try the ultimate home bodyweight workout video. Um, otherwise, look at the beginners and intermediate workout on carnivore. So I think it's like working out on a carnivore diet video, something like that. Um, but both of those videos are on the playlist on my channel under exercise, I believe. But check those out. They're very well explained, extremely detailed, and you'll probably for your time you, you won't find anything more informative online. Uh, but yeah, what I mean, Alicia, what would you recommend to an absolute beginner in terms of like resistance training? Oh, I was going to say, Jonathan, booking a consultation with Jonathan. <laughs> um, if, look, if you keep your coins, yeah. <laughs> um, it's definitely slow and steady, and you know you've got to think about your current activity level, uh, what your goals are, what's what's manageable, you know, um, and and what you want to get out of your sessions. Um, so I think, you know, titrating the exercise up, don't go in and be like, bang, going to do five sessions a week because we all know what's going to happen at the end of that. You're going to come out with extreme DOMS. You're going to feel exhausted and be like, no, nah, I can't do this long term. So, you know, it's, it's about incrementally bumping that up. And, um, you know, you and I can spruik the benefits of weight training until the cows come home. But um, that is an absolute game changer to put some kind of strength training into your routine. That's where you're really going to see those body composition shifts. It, the, the health benefits are absolutely overwhelming, the mental health benefits, and uh, it, it, it really gives you a, a sense of achievement gives you goals that you know that you can push yourself to you know do an extra rep or you know add in a different exercise or you know try a different cadence you know there's always things that you can finesse and shift those goal posts so yeah if you if you're someone that's really just new to this just yet yeah, take it easy love the enthusiasm but make sure that you don't go too hard too fast yeah for sure you won't get more results for it keith my, my point and this is coming from a, a bodybuilder, so someone that does like to go nuts in the gym and train really, really hard and loves work sort of stuff. I, I recommend people just to start low. Um, so do something you can achieve. You know, you can always raise your standards later. So my friend Jerome Armstrong, who I learned a lot of my stuff off about high intensity training, things like that. Um, mm. He says, you know, start somewhere, do something more than what you're doing now. You can always raise your standards later. You won't get more results for doing 10 times more. It's not yeah. You know, ten tenfold increase. Diminishing returns do happen. I'd say I could I could train and get exactly the same results doing three sessions per week. But yeah, I'm a bit of a masochist. I like to train four times per week for the most part. That's just me. Yeah. That's my own hum, human nature. So yeah, gosh, I remember the days of two hour sessions in the gym for six six days a week. Oof, nah. <laughs> I did um. I was interviewed quite recently by um, Kent Carnivore. So he runs the biggest oh, yeah. Carnivore YouTube channel on on here, basically on this platform, um, in the UK at least. And yeah, I sort of said, oh, you know, if you're, if you're bodybuilding, this video is about bodybuilding, so it might not apply to everyone sort of thing, but, you know, this is what you can do, this is what I recommend. And they're saying in the comments section, oh, you know, it's not great. You know, you're very aged, you're this, you're that. Oh, you're destroying your health. I'm like... I'm giving people a viable option, which is the healthiest option that they can do, which is the safest option they can do. And this fat slob online is trying to tell me what I, where I stand. No fucking chance. No fucking chance ever. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, but yeah, th this guy didn't even have a face to his name, nothing. I think his name was like where you, his name was like at where union Jack on YouTube. And he just had a picture of the British flag or something. And that was it. And I was like, wow. Um, yeah, you're telling me what to do, then you know. But the, the thing is, I don't tell people to do bodybuilding. I just get people on the path no. where they can prove from where they are right now. And yeah, sometimes yeah. I do consult people that are fit and healthy, like Alicia. Maybe they want a bit more. Maybe they want bigger arms. You know, maybe they want to look in the mirror and feel good about themselves. Well, I'll tell them the best way to do it based on my opinion and expertise. They can take it or leave it. But at the end of the day, I'm providing a service which people seem to very much value. And I've got heaps of testimonials to back that up. And, um, you know, I've learned from like-minded people like people like Elisha, Jerome, who's in the chat right now, um, Professor Barkay, loads of people. Are, I seem to have found the rough formula for most people. Um, so, you know, you can take my advice or leave it. But, you know, raise your standards over time. So that's that's um, yeah. Jerome's channel, by the way. 
in case someone's wondering. It's a great so, phrase, Jerome. Love it. Yeah, so um, I recommend if you guys are watching now, you care about bodybuilding, or whatever, um, even just some other stuff, so a bit about fat loss and diet and some interesting perspectives, check out his channel. Um, his channel is literally Jerome Armstrong, as you see it on the screen right now. And also subscribe to Alicia, and her name is Baroness of Beef. And I've double-checked it on my laptop and my phone. It is the first thing to come up, so you can't miss it. Love it. Um, just wanted to say before we wrap this up, do you have any final words? Do I have any final words? Well, thank you so much for having me on today, and thanks, guys, for hanging in there with the tech difficulties we've got there in the end. Um, you know, I... I think in, in the carnivore spaces, there's so many avenues and rabbit holes you can go down. And um, I think it's wonderful that there are so many different spaces and different channels for people to go and, you know, experience. And there's something for everyone, you know. Um, and, you know, I absolutely love the message that you send out through your channel and and how you, you're raw and real about your own personal experience as well. So I really resonate with that. So I wanted to thank you um, for for that and for having me on. And um, to, to anyone that is experiencing issues on carnivore, if you're new to it, if you're further down the track and you're looking for some help, definitely think about reaching out to a carnivore coach if you feel like you need that extra push. You know, there's Jonathan, there's there's Jerome, as he mentioned, there's there's a myriad of really good, decent people in that space that are, you know, just want to share their wealth of knowledge. So yeah, always reach out. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. So if, if you're listening to now, you're wondering where you can find me. Um in the show notes below in the description, you can find me at compositionconsultant.com. Um off of affordable, you know, consultation and coaching packages. Roughly right now, despite increasing my prices three times in the last year and a half. I'm still the cheapest carnival coach for body composition online. So go figure. Um, but yeah, just just speaks volumes about, you know, the person I am. I don't like ripping people off. And that's how I value myself. But, um, you know, I've been told loads of times I should double my price. But, you know, the people that need this kind of help, the people that are being fobbed off by other people online, you know, perhaps vegan nutritionists, people that just spout bollocks basically online. Um, they're charging a lot of money, guys, you know. I don't like to slander people, but I'll I'll say this about the vegan lifestyle. I've seen a lot of ex-vegans. Um, they're actually the happiest people I've ever met right now because they're ex-vegans, not, you know, anything else. So I, I definitely think about the um, the coaching, diet, training plans that offer ebooks as well. Um, and I will actually send Alicia for coming today um, all of my ebooks for her to look at um because i haven't done yet that yet for some reason but anyway i'll send them through after this chat but um yeah thanks for coming on and again we can find you at the baroness of beef that is right Brilliant. thanks jonathan Brilliant. cheers